Third grade math, chapter one, lesson 1.1. We're gonna discuss number patterns. Back in grade two math video 3.11, we saw number patterns on a hundred board. This is a hundred board, do you remember? And skip counting by three, we can see the pattern that is made. We have three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, it's skip counting by threes, and look at the pattern of the yellow squares. They're going in a diagonal. A pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects in which the order helps us predict what will come next. We have a pattern here. We have an orange square, a green triangle, a yellow hexagon. Then it repeats, orange square, green triangle, yellow hexagon. And we could continu continue this pattern on by putting another orange square here, couldn't we, on this side? Look at this. It skipped counting by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Do you know what would come next? Two is being added to each previous number. If you said twelve, you're right. Look at this number pattern. We have a five, two, three. Five, two, three, five. Do you know what would go here? If you said two, you're right. That's a number pattern. There's even patterns in artwork. We can see that all the hexagons are yellow and all the squares are orange. And we could finish coloring this in by using that pattern. We can use an addition table to find patterns. Here we have columns coming down of numbers. And here we have rows going across of numbers. You can see the plus sign right here in the corner. If we add a number from this yellow bar to the number to the blue bar, they'll meet at that column and row. Take a look at this addition table. See how it's filled in pink here and here underneath the yellow and next to the blue? When we add zero, to another add end, the number will stay the same. Our sum will be the same as the add end that we added zero to. So here we have a four. If we add zero to it, it's going to stay four. Here we have a six. We add zero to it, it stays six. Even if we go this way, zero plus seven is seven. We can also add in any order and we'll get the same sum. We can add two to two, two, to three, two, to four, two, to five, and we'll get these as the sum. It would be the same as adding two this way to these numbers in the yellow bar. So look, here's two. If we add it to six, we'll get an eight, see? And if we go two this way and add it to a six, it's an eight. We can add two plus five and it'll equal seven. Or we can add 5 plus 2 and equal, it'll equal 7. See? Either way. We've got a 7 here and a 7 there. And the sums go on a diagonal for all of these that have the same sum. So here's the sums of 10 going on a diagonal, the sums of 8, the sums of 6, the sums of 4, the sums of 2 are colored in pink. And they're making diagonals, aren't they? And if you look at it this way, it's almost like it's making a checkerboard design, isn't it? Because every other one is colored pink. So we can even do that as a pattern. 8 plus 0 is equal to 7 plus 1. They both have 8 as a sum. See? We can even do 6 plus 2 and 5 plus 3 by coming down like this. They all have the sum of 8. The identity property of addition tells us the sum of any number and zero is that number. Five plus zero is going to equal five. The add end keeps its identity. That's why it's called the identity property. Its name doesn't change. When we add a zero to it, it stays a five. The commutative property of addition tells us we can add two or more numbers in any order and we'll get the same sum. 1 plus 2 is equal to 2 plus 1. 
This side's equal to 3, and this side's equal to 3. We can add 1 plus 2 plus 3, and that's going to equal 3 plus 2 plus 1, or 2 plus 3 plus 1, or even 1 plus 3 plus 2. It doesn't matter what order we add, the commutative property says it doesn't matter. We can shade all the sums of 4, like I've done here, and then write addition sentences for each sum. We have 4 plus 0. Our addition table tells us it's equal to a 4, but because we're adding a 0 to it, we know it's going to stay 4. The identity property says that. Look at now we have 0 plus 4. That's the commutative property. 4 plus 0 is equal to 0 plus 4, so they're both 4. We have 3 plus 1. It's equal to 4. 3 plus 1. We can see on the table. And 1 plus 3 is equal to 4 because it doesn't matter what order we add in because of the commutative property. And then we have 2 plus 2. 2 plus 2 is 4. Even numbers end in 0, 2, 4, 6, or 8. So we know 10 is an even number because it ends in a 0, and that's the rule. Odd numbers end in a 1, 3, 5, 7, or 9. So we know 11 is an odd number because it ends in a 1. When the add-ins are even numbers, their sum will be an even number. Here we're adding two even numbers, 2 and 4 are even, and the sum is even, it's a 6. Here we're adding two even numbers, a 4 and a 6, and the sum is an even number, it's a 10. We're adding two even numbers, 6 and 8, our sum is an even number, it's a 14. But the sum will be an odd number if one of the add-ins is odd. We have one odd, one even, a 1 and a 2, our sum is an odd number 3. We have an odd number 3, an even number 4, and our sum is odd. Because we're adding one odd number to each of these, our sum, the sums are odd. Even with three digits, but one is odd, not two. You can get some scratch paper and try this with a bunch of different add-ins and try adding even and odd numbers or all even or all odd and see what you get. But if you have one odd number, the sum will be odd. We can use the commutative property of addition to write related addition sentences because they will use the same numbers. They are fact families. 3 plus something is equal to 12 and 9 plus something is equal to 12. We have a 3, a 9, and a 12. So, those are the related facts. We can write 3 plus 9 is 12, and we can write 9 plus 3 is 12, and it doesn't matter which order we add them, because the commutative property says it can be any order, they both equal 12. For this one, we have 5 plus something is equal to 13, and 8 plus something is equal to 13. We have a 5, an 8, and a 13. Those are our related facts. So we can write 5 plus 8 and 8 plus 5 and put them in different orders. They'll both equal 13. Here we have four number sentences. Can you tell which of these show the commutative property of addition? And there might be more than one. So let's take a look. 33 plus 5 is equal to 38. Well, that by itself does not show the commutative property of addition because it doesn't show it being added in another direction. So it's not this one. Let's take a look at this. 33 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 33. Does that show the commutative property of addition? Yes, it does, because it shows it being added in either direction. So we know that that could be one of the number sentences showing the commutative property. How about this one? 33 plus 0 is equal to 0 plus 33. Does that show the commutative property? 
Yes, it's almost like this one. They're being added in different orders, and they'll equal the same thing. This side is equal to 33, and this side is equal to 33, so they're equal to each other. So yes, this one is showing the commutative property also. And because it's being added to zero, it could be identity property, couldn't it? How about this one? This one's got parentheses around the 5 plus 0, and this one's got parentheses around the 33 plus 5. When we see parentheses, we do what's in the parentheses first. We solve that first. So for 33 plus 5 plus 0, we would add this first and then add it to the 33. For this one, we would add the 33 plus 5 first, get our sum, and then add it to 0. And because we're adding in different orders with related facts, this is the commutative property. Do you know what other property that this could be, aside from the commutative property? Some of you may know. This one fits the commutative property of addition, but it also fits the associative property of addition. That's called the grouping property. And we're going to talk more about that in a few lessons, lesson 1.5. But it's both properties. Just like this one is commutative property and identity property because we're adding a zero. So remember that a pattern is an ordered set of numbers or objects in which the order helps us predict what will come next. And remember the identity property of addition tells us the sum of any number in zero is that number. The add end keeps its identity. And also remember, the commutative property of addition tells us we can add two or more numbers in any order and we're going to get the same sum. The last thing you need to remember is that the sum will be an odd number if one of the add-ins is odd and the add-ins are even, their sum will be an even number. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you next time. Bye.